Hey folks, so tonight I have a real special treat. This this video has been months in the making and due to just some unfortunate world events, it's just been delayed non-stop. But anyway, I finally have everything I need to get it done, so that's what we're doing. Tonight I have the cheapest, most power efficient Game Boy Advance backlight mod on the market right now. Well, it's certainly the cheapest. I don't know about power efficiency yet. I haven't actually tested it, but based on the numbers I've seen, I'm pretty sure we're gonna see nothing but good things. This is what you get for your $15. You get the PCB itself and a ribbon cable. Now this comes in both 32 pin and 40 pin versions. I have the 32 pin version because this is for a Game Boy Advance. However, we're going to be installing it in Game Boy Advance SP because that's how I roll. All right, so to start off, you need the uh, actual kit itself, which is just these two parts, but you also need to order yourself one of these. This is a Game Boy Micro LCD. When I originally started setting out to make this video, these LCDs were like seven, eight bucks a pop. Right now, they seem to be sitting around 12 to 16. Um, I don't know if that's supply related or COVID related because every other thing Game Boy related has practically doubled in price, um, but I don't know, there, there hasn't been a demand for these LCDs so I don't think the supply has changed much, I think it's just, I think it's just COVID pricing. Um, but anyway, oh, this, this is going to be good, uh, sorry, I, I'm just so excited to do this. I do already have my Game Boy Advance taken apart here. Um, we've got the AGS-001 variant, but this mod is mostly compatible, I guess. Uh, it'll work on... Uh, I mean, it's designed for a Game Boy Advance, not a Game Boy Advance SP, so with the adapter that we're using, this bad boy, uh, we could use an AGS-101 as well as an AGS-001 because this just ignores those last two uh, backlight slash front light pins anyway. But um, if you have an AGS-101, I really don't know why you'd be doing this mod. <laughs> but anyway, let's let's go ahead and get started. That's enough, uh, that's enough of that. So let me pull the battery out of this thing. And we will be reshelling this as well because because I've got a really cool shell that I want to use. All right. There's your square nut. I'll save this shell for something else down the line. I don't know. I've got to get more donor Game Boy Advance SPs. I think this is my last one. But it's okay. We'll make it work. Uh, so normally, you'd start by um, completely stripping down your Game Boy Advance SP because we got to get into the top half to replace the screen. But because, like I said, I'm reshelling this thing, all I need is this part. Um, and even though I literally just pulled it out of the bottom, I forgot we were going to run some power usage tests because that's always interesting. That's not sarcasm. Those. That's generally interesting to me. Plus, I gotta back up one of my claims. If I say it's the most power efficient kit, we gotta actually prove that. So let me put this battery back. Oh, wait, no, we don't want the battery. We want power supply. a little low, but I'll fix that in just a moment. There we go. Oh shoot, I need my Pokemon game. Oh, there it is. Aha! Found it. Don't worry. I always test with the same game. 
plug in an AGS001 screen here. And I guess let's set this to Point seven volts. And this is front lit screen. Front light is on, despite how hard that is to see. And in my testing area, it is pulling a whopping fifty four point seven milliamps. Now for the uh, kit here. Now I just had this plugged in. I'm pretty sure it goes pins up. If not, we can fix it later. On this kit, it definitely goes pin, or on the adapter, it definitely goes pins up. On this flex cable. What I do with the screen? Oh, it's right here. And then this plugs in. There's two connectors, one right here. And then the other for the backlight. This little itty bitty connector that we got to be really careful not to break because they're a pain in the butt to solder. Without this little one, you have no backlight, and that kind of defeats the purpose. So let's try it out. Nice. All right. All right. And what was it at before? 54 milliamps? We're down to 39.3. <laughs> so not only is this as efficient, it's even more efficient. It uses even less power. Uh, of course, the light button doesn't do anything on the Game Boy Advance SP. Because, like I said, this is a mod designed out of Game Boy Advance. But just look at that. Now, you probably noticed one small issue in that the screen itself is kind of dark. Um, yeah, oops, that was already off. If we turn off all the lights, it looks a little bit better, but it's still, it's still a little bit dark for my tastes. So luckily there is a solution to that. Let's go and flip this off, flip that off. And here's what we can do. I'm going to detach the Game Boy Micro LCD, but I'm going to leave everything else attached because... Why not? Um, what we want to do is we want to take a look at this resistor right here down at the bottom of the backlight connector. This is a 3000 ohm resistor. Alex says on his product description page that you can swap this out for increased brightness if you want. And that's what we're going to do. I don't know what's a good value, so I guess we're going to experiment a little. Now presumably, less resistance means brighter backlight, and more resistance would be darker. Um, we're not going to do 3.3 ohms, or 1 ohms, 1 ohm. Let's try 330. That's probably going to be super bright. 10 is nowhere near what I'm looking for.
5.1. Yeah, all right, 22. At 1.8k, let's try that. One million. Yeah, sure. Let's try that. Um, yeah. Let's try one point eight k. Failing that, we can go down to four hundred ninety. So I'm sorry. I completely forgot to mention this, but I just got so excited and started going right into this kit. This kit I picked up, like I said, I only paid like 15 bucks for it, because that's how much it cost, but I got it from a vendor called Inside Gadgets, as you could probably guess from the title. Bought this out of my own pocket. This was not provided, because I thought this was the coolest thing ever. I'm actually going to disconnect this so that I can get a better angle on it. The topic came up the other day. I mean, I, I bought this back in, like, I want to say February. Like, I know it's been a long time. The topic came up recently, and Alex was saying apparently he's only sold one of these, and it is July, so I guess I'm the only one who bought one. Which means I have a unique Game Boy Advance, or I will have a unique Game Boy Advance pretty soon. I appreciate that he includes instructions for this, but I would appreciate also if it were a little bit easier to get to. Let's try some flux. That's better. All right, let's try it out now. And because I'm sure it's just a burning question at your heart, no, it this does not work in a Game Boy Color. I tried it. I think at some point, you, once you start chaining adapters together, if you, have to, if you have to connect three or more adapters, it's just not gonna work. Okay. Let's try it out. So that's a bit high. There we go. So quite frankly, it actually looks darker to me. I guess we gotta go the other way. Though it's pulling the same amount of power, that's bizarre. Huh. Oops. Okay, well not quite sure how to how to react to that. <laughs> That's what I did. All right, well, I'll come back to this later. It's no big deal. Let's move on with the install. All right, oops. 
Oops, a doodle. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this off. So let's get started by, uh, since I'm using a brand new shell, well, brand new aftermarket shell, let's get started by putting the hinges in it. No, this is going to fall out. Let's just take it out now. That's going to go like that. I need some hinges. Need one of these. And one of these. Both of these. Oh, nice. Just like the silver one, this gold one has tons of flashing on the hinge covers. Go for it. I'm going to do the right hinge first, open it to the uh, standard open position, and uh, slide in the white hinge. Usually clicks, but I guess it didn't that time. Let's do the other side. Same thing, usually clicks, but I guess it didn't, but at least the hinge itself is nice and clicky and solid. All right, now for the fun part. So I went ahead and grabbed a new glass lens out of my, uh, my stockpile. I've chosen this red and gold one because, not because this is a Famicom shell or anything, but because I figured the gold accent would be would nicely match the gold shell, and because I wanted to use red buttons. I do not have red buttons. I thought I had red buttons. So I'm going to use black buttons. And I'm going to order some red buttons. But, let's go ahead and peel this off. Peel this off glass shell. Pop that in there. And I had actually designed this bezel, <laughs> this bracket, with the uh, IPS lenses in mind. Um, let me actually pop that out of there. And so this bracket slash bezel will actually fit in the shell without a lens. You can use it just like that, but we're going to use a lens. Um, so what I what I mean by designed it with an IPS lens in mind is I have this lens that I salvaged off one of the IPS kits, and I sized it to the edge of this lens, so you just line it up with the corners of the lens and then stick it down. But I'm going to have to tweak my design for this a little bit because this is... This is too big, which is why I say put it in the shell first and take this. Screen goes towards the top. And 
Nope, I messed that up. So this moves around a little in here. It won't once this bracket is in place. There we go. Got any 3D print strings there. And we can take the screen, wipe it off if it's dirty which mine is, of course, because there's no protective film on it. And because of who I am as a person. Usually you'd want to use a lint-free cloth, and that is obviously not what I'm using. There is plenty of lint, okay. And this will drop right into that bracket, just like that. And then from here, we just need to fold this up in a way such that everything fits closed up. Luckily, Nintendo designed these shells whoops, with some extra thickness in mind. And, of course, this isn't a Nintendo shell, but it's copied from a Nintendo shell. make this work. That'll go just about like that. It's always the worst part, getting this adapter coiled up. I'm going to have to bend this a little like that. That's okay. And where's my top? I lost my top. Here I am, topless. Oh. I put all my resistors on top of it because I don't know why. Smash that down there. Oh, I didn't anticipate this. It actually does not quite fit. The problem is this ribbon here. So we can fold this up a little. The problem is the connector on this ribbon. I didn't anticipate this fitting or this not fitting. But that's okay because we can just fold it. For the record, I do not condone folding ribbon cables like this, but got to do what you got to do. I know, we still gotta put a twist in there. But it'll fit. It'll, it'll be good, it'll fit. We'll just mash it all together and it'll be good. That's the, uh... That's the way to do it. Oh god, this is terrible. Okay. So as usual, I recommend using OEM screws whenever possible, but even the donor SP that I'm pulling these parts from isn't doesn't have OEM screws. Head. That's a cross head. Okay. And 
It'll fit. The ribbon cables are just being stubborn. There's certainly more clearance without the lens, and that actually might need to come out. Okay, yeah, probably not a good idea to have a lens in there too, but screw it, do it live, okay. For the record, I don't think this is actually easier to install on a Game Boy Advance either. I think you run into the same clearance issues. That's okay. We'll make it happen. In time. Oh, I'm gonna actually need a speaker for this. Oh no, I'm not. I have one right here. Ooh, and I have the mesh this time. from the same pool as the last time. So there we go. Membranes. Drop my flux. Okay. You know, I keep opening it up and seeing that teal bezel and thinking it's on. And then I get confused as to how it could possibly be on with nothing plugged into it. 
I think this was the best possible color choice. Ah. God damn it. Go on, just all fall out. How much I had to fold this cable, there is a surprising lack of slack on it. But it's okay, I got it. I just have to resort my buttons again. Here would be a good spot to pause and make sure everything is working well. At the very least, make sure the buttons are good. And I think we are good. But I'm just going to carry on. Because it's just going to work. I'm just going to plug it in. And there's going to be no issues. You'll see. thought I had two of the same shoulder buttons and I was confused as to how that would work. And for those who are just doing this for the first time, that is putting together Game Boy Advance SP, I actually did this a little bit slower and talked through every step in some of my other videos, uh, but specifically most recently the silver IPS one that I just did. So if that's what you're looking for, check that video out. Get in there. Oh wait, that's upside down, isn't it? It is. So these square nuts have two sides to them. Uh, one side has a little divot. It has a uh, chamfer on the screw hole, whereas the other side does not have a chamfer. You want the chamfer down. It'll still work the other way, but it'll work easier this way.
careful about over tightening these. Especially in an aftermarket shell. I'm putting my thumb over the screw post. In the off chance I do start poking through, if I feel it before it gets too bad, I can stop. All right, we are very nearly done. Yeah, you can really see how dark it is, just how much reflection, by how much re reflection there is. But, yeah, look at that. If that's not the most beautiful thing I've ever done seeing, I don't know what to tell you. covers in. And, oh, no. There we go. Oh, man. Went too far. And you can see, you get the full viewing range of the screen itself. You get this dynamic curve back, it's a feature. Trust me, I know these things. <laughs> let's do let's do Super Mario World. Unlike these uh, garbage IPS kits, there is zero, uh, zero lag, because there's no frame buffer. This game is native, or this screen is natively compatible with this Game Boy Advance. And we're not judging how bad I am at Mario World. Because you try playing through the viewfinder, you'll find it's not that easy. I lied, I'm not playing through the viewfinder. I'm just really bad at Mario World. But enough about Mario World. You guys came to see something you've never seen before, something only written about. Game Boy Color on a Game Boy Micro. Screen. And we still have the uh, widescreen LNR for those monsters that like playing like that. Isn't it the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life? Alright, so 
Yeah, I don't know what else to say about this. Um, I'm gonna tweak my bracket a little bit more. I'll post it on the Thingiverse. I'll throw a link in the description. I'll throw a link in the description to uh, Alex's, or excuse me, Inside Gadgets, um, this kit here if you wanna grab one for yourself. He does include instructions on the listing for installing this in a um, Game Boy Advance, not in a Game Boy Advance SP, but for the most part, the process is the exact same. You just plug that ribbon cable directly into the Game Boy Advance, and there you go. And you can swap out that resistor if you want more brightness. For whatever reason, it didn't work for me. I will do some more research and find out why. And by do research, I mean I'm just going to ask Alex and get his input on that. And um, I don't know. I'll throw an update in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic night.